Hi, it's Corrine for Cut at Home, and today I am making a gift box and wrapping it with the Tim Holtz tissue paper. And I'm making my own box. Um, I'm using 12 by 12 white cardstock. I do have a video where I go into great detail about how to make a box this exact size. I will link that in the description box on my YouTube channel at Corrine's Creations. So it'll be under the description box if you want more detailed information. But I'll quickly show you how I do this. And once you have the concept of this, you can make any size box that your limit, that your uh, paper size limits you to. So this I'm scoring at four inches and you will have seen me score it twice because it is thick cardstock. So I scored it at four inches, turned it, four inches, turned it, four inches, turned it, and four inches. So all four sides I'm scoring in at four inches and now we're cutting the score lines. And here I'm gonna show you up close, we're going to be cutting on one of the score lines all the way up to the next score line without going over it. And then we will do the exact same thing we did when we scored it. We will rotate it once, skip a score line, and cut it again. I like to use my paper trimmer because I can get a straight cut, but you can use scissors as well. So here's what it ends up looking like. Again, we um, scored one, rotated it, scored it, rotated it. And now we want to fold on all our score marks and give it a good crease with our bone folder. This will help show you the shape of the box that's taking place. And this is going to be a four inch square box. So now I'm just folding up my tabs and I like to look at it both ways. I, I fold it on the inside and then fold it on the outside and see which way lines up better. You wanna make sure your box is lined up very well to make it look seamless when you're done. And now you can use tape runner if you prefer. I like to use wet glue because it gives me a little time to move it around if I need to. So I'm using some Scotch Quick Dry and I'm adding it to the entire tab. I'm making sure to get all the, the edges of the tab so it lines up nicely and glues down nicely. And once your box is glued together, it ends up being a very strong box because it's essentially two pieces of cardstock on each other. So it ends up being a nice sturdy box. I'm using my bone folder just to make sure it's all pressed down and here is my box. It, this looks great with pattern paper as well. I've done a Christmas box like this using graphic 45 paper from Cut It Home and it was beautiful. So now we're making the lid. You don't need to use a full 12 by 12 if you don't want. I'm using an eight and a half by 11 and I'm cutting it to six and one eighth inches square because you need your lid to be a little bit larger than your bottom box so it fits on nicely. So now I'm going to score this at one inches. Again, you'll see me score it twice. I'm doing one inches, rotating, one inches, rotating. So again, it's all four sides. And now we're going to do the same thing where we cut on the score lines. However, they will be a little, it'll be a little bit different. We're gonna cut across from each other. So here I'm cutting out a small notch and this just eliminates bulk when you fold your corners together. So I'm doing that on both ends. I'm gonna rotate it all the way around and on the opposite ends do the exact same thing. Just a tiny notch is all you need. And now again, you want to fold on all your score marks and give it a good cre crease with your bone folder and you'll see the lid start taking shape. I'm again adding my glue to the entire tab and on the lid I like to glue the tabs to the inside of my box. It just gives it a cleaner look. So I'm just quickly adding my glue and pressing it down. And this will give it a perfect lid for your box. And like I said, once you get the concept down, you can make any size box that you want. But I needed a, a size for a little uh, birthday present that was going in it. So here is both the bottom and the lid. And then what I did off camera is filled it with my gift, added some tissue paper. And now I'm using the Tim Holtz tissue paper and wrapping it just like you would a normal gift, adding a little bit of scotch tape to hold it together. I love this tissue paper. There's so many things you can do with it. This is the Postal, Ideology Postal paper. So now I'm using some more of the tissue paper. I'm just pulling off an amount and I'm folding it over 
I think three times I folded it over. I'm using the Heartfelt Creations Ariana Blooms die set. You can use the Heartfelt Creations Sunflower set also is what I was showing you there. But I love the Ariana Blooms. I use these a lot in my videos because I love making handmade flowers out of this. So the tissue paper makes great flowers too and it matches your wrapping paper. So I cut out some more off camera just to give me several to work with. I'm separating the large flowers and I'm using some hot glue and adding two of the petals together or two of the flowers together. Now with the remaining flowers, I am going to give them a little dimension. So what I'm doing is folding them in half, adding a little bit of hot glue and folding them in half again. You wanna be careful using hot glue. If you're more comfortable with wet glue, that's fine. It just takes a little bit longer. So again, I'm folding them in half, adding a touch of hot glue, folding them in half again. And then we will be adding those to the existing flowers that we have down there. Again, this is the largest size in the Ariana Blooms that I'm using. And I believe I had six. You could do as many as you want. You can make this as dimensional as you want. I just used what I had there. Here's my last one. This tissue paper also, you can ink it, you can stain it. I wanted it the natural color. So now I'm adding a little bit of hot glue and adding that to the center point of my flower. And the next one, I'm adding it across from that first one that I did. So here I show you a little bit closer. There is one and that's the one across from it. And now I'll be adding the third one to the side of that. And then the fourth one across from that one. So you just basically want to alternate them. And now I only have two left, so I'm going to add those to the offsetting them to the other flowers that I did. I can add more, but at this point I choose not to. I'm going to use the next size down flower petal and add those to the center of this flower. So I add, I think, five or six layers. I'm not quite sure. I just kept adding until I got the dimension that I was looking for. And this was a very quick process to do. And now I'm just holding it in the middle and fluffing it up around to see if I'm happy with the dimension and I, I am happy with it. I'm using some red satin ribbon that I had in my stash and wrapping it around the present and I will use a little bit of hot glue to adhere it to the top of the present. Not worried about how it looks in the top because I plan on putting the flower on there. adhering the flower with some hot glue. Here are some spell binders. These are really pretty label dies. These are the Petite Labels 1, and you get six dies in that set. As you can see, there's two different shapes and you get the alternating sizes down. I'll have the product codes in the description box and also on Cut It Home's blog for all the products that I use. But this is a really pretty shape that I like to use. And here also I'm going to use the With Love Sentiment from Spellbinders as well. And this is the Delight Sentiment, which is um, comes with Happy Birthday and With Love. And I love the fonts of these. So I'm going to run those through my Sizzix using some white cardstock. And I have them cut side up as I'm running it through. These quickly pop right out. And now I decided I wanted to add some gold enamel, embossing enamel to it. So I'm using a Versamark ink pad to add some sticky ink to it. And now I'm adding my gold embossing powder. And then I will use my heat gun to heat set this. So whatever embossing powder, you can change your white paper to look however you want, whatever color you wanted. I thought gold would look good. Again, this is for a birthday present for a friend. So now I want to add this with love to the label. So I just cut it. 
I cut off one of the little curlicues and I end up adding the little curlicue to the other side of the word with. You don't have to do that. I just, I liked the look of it. Using a little bit of Scotch Quick Dry and just adhering that onto my label. And now I think it looks good like that, but like I said, I wanted to add the other little curly Q to the other side. I wanted to give my eye in the word with a, a um, dot on the top. So I'm using an embossing pen. It's just like my Versamark ink, but it's a pen. And I added a little more of the embossing powder and that way I could dot my eye with it. So there's the final label. And I decided I wanted to add a little baker's twine. So I pulled off the flower. I'm wrapping my baker's twine around it. Just wanted to give my, my present a little more texture. So I'm adding a, a bow that will stick out the sides there as well. Again, I will just hot glue that down, place my flower back on it. And on the ends of the baker's twine, I frayed them a little. I wanted to give it a little frayed edge. And now I'm adding my With Love, adding a large pearl in the center. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and check out Cut It Home's blog. I'll have all the product codes listed there along with detailed photos. Thanks so much for watching.